Hi, this is Jack Lipton, and this is Critical Materials Corner. Today, we're going to look at Appia, and we're going to talk to its CEO and chairman, president. All those jobs rolled into two people, Tom Drivis, the founder of the company, and Fred Kozak, who has today assumed the role of president. Um, I would like to know, uh, Frederick, uh, congratulations on your new position, and I'd like to put you on the spot. I'd like to ask you now, what exactly are your plans for Appia in the next 24 months? How are you going to move the deposit to development as a mine? And what are you going to do with the material after you have extracted from the earth? Well, for uh, day one on the job, Jack, that's uh, that's quite a quite a question. Um, we know what we know what Appia's plans are through the summer, and uh, we've got a very active, <clears throat> excuse me, delineation drilling program arranged for the summer. Uh, we're looking at winterizing our camp uh, up on location so that we will be able to drill through the winter. And specific to our plans in the next 24 months. Well, I can see that we will be able to pull ore out of the deposit within that time frame as to where it goes. That will be the next question. Um, we know the Saskatchewan Research Council in Saskatoon is building a processing facility for rare earths. We do know that there are other opportunities both in North America and outside of China for rare earth processing. The, my understanding is that the Saskatchewan Research Council will have their uh, system ready in about 24 months or sooner. Is that correct? Yes, okay. they, they have said before the end of 2022, so hopefully within yeah. the next 18 months. And what's the company doing about the, the need to extract the rare earths from, from the monazite ore? It, in other words, to prepare uh, a mixed uh, rare earth material that will feed the separation plant at the Saskatchewan Research Council. Who's going to do that chemical work, that chem chemical engineering work? Um, Tom, would you like to t take yes. that? Uh, Jack, what, we've, we've, we started a benchmark uh, uh, metallurgical study uh, uh, at, um, that is done at, uh, at the Saskatchewan Research Council right now. So mm -hmm. the, the aim there would be to sort of separate the, the uh, uh, monazite from the horse rock and, uh, and also produce um, uh, uh, carbonate um, uh, concentrate. The, the fact, U City, I want to remind our viewers, is Uranium City, Saskatchewan, which is basically a center of the Canadian uh, uranium mining refining industry. So I guess that... That uh, answers my next question, which is what were you guys planning to do with the uranium and the thorium? And uh, I, I, can I assume that it will be processed uh, in Uranium City or nearby and it will be legally disposed of or sold? Well, Jack, I mean, this is, uh, you know, it's down, down the road, but, but let me give you our thoughts. Our thoughts is... We're going to concentrate the monazite in either on the property or uranium city, and, okay. and we're going to drive it to either either Saskatoon or, or some other uh, uh, place uh, where they what well, is going to be processed. Uh, if if we uh, if we do a deal with the SRC, for example, the Saskatchewan Research Council, they mm -hmm. are licensed to deal with radioactivity, uh, and they've got uh, you know they will be. The uranium, obviously, we know what, uh, what we're going to do with it. We're going to be selling, you know, they, we're going to be selling it. But in terms of the thorium, they will, you know, they will deal with that. Here's the, the point. Uh, Monazite has been the real sleeper in 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 um, North America, anyway, and and most of the rest of the world, because no one could process it because they could not legally uh, do anything with the uranium and thorium, either to sell it or to store it. Now, as, as I'm sure you know, we, we've now got uh, a, a major uh, operation going in the United States with Energy Fuels, which is fully licensed to uh, process uranium and sell it and to store thorium, as is, uh, I believe, the, the Saskatchewan Research Council. So you, you really are the only 
guys in town, and you're certainly the only ones in Canada who, who can address monazite as a feedstock. And I want to remind uh, everyone that monazite is, is 50 to 60% richer in, in magnetic rare earths than basnesite. So that if, if, if you have your druthers, as they say, you would, you would, always, you would always mine monazite. The reason it hasn't been done up till now is because of the issue of radioactivity. Now, now that this issue has been solved once in the U.S. and now in Canada, I think that we're going to see a revival of the Canadian rare earth industry, but with a new emphasis on monazite. So I'm, I'm very interested in following what you're doing, and I'm very glad you got to it. Um, I happen to know that your monazite is probably the richest monazite in, in, in critical rare earths of any deposit I have ever come across on this planet. Now, the size of it is going to be very important. That's I know you don't know that yet. That's what you're looking for. You, you haven't really proven out uh, the resource yet. But good luck to you guys because uh, you only have one direction to go. Uh, Jack, we're, we're quite excited. As, as you mentioned, uh, we've got the uh, the highest or one of the highest monazite uh, uh, in, in the world. Um, mm -hmm. We also have gallium, within, and we know that that occurs with uh, mon with monazite. And and we're doing some work to uh, reassaying old drill holes to see uh, how much is there. Uh, but our goal is to uh, our obvious goal is to uh, be a major uh, critical area supplier in North America. Uh, just just as a very interesting final comment I want to make is this. Uh, the largest gallium refiner in the Western world outside of China is Neo Performance Materials of Toronto. So I have a feeling that Neo is going to be talking to you in the very near future about that. And with that, I'd like to say thank you very much. And really, we have to follow this one because this is Canada's most prominent at this point in birds. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. It's a pleasure to speak with you again.